<laughs> oh, this, this is what I'm talking about. What a thing. Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. And welcome to the most fun I've had in a car in a long, long time. Welcome to the Hyundai i20N, a 200 horsepower micro pocket rocket that is guaranteed to put a smile on your face. Honestly, this thing goes around corners just so well. <laughs> now I think it's fair to say I'm known as a bit of a mini guy. I do love my minis, but actually what I really love is a small hot hatch, a B road and an incredible drive. And there are many brilliant hot hatches out there. This car's big brother, the i30N and the i30N Fastback are two of the best in my opinion. They are brilliant things, especially when you factor in how much they cost. They are brilliant bang for your buck. You then need to throw into the mix things like the GR Yaris, which I think is probably the best hot hatch out there, but it is significantly more expensive than this. But then things like the Fiesta ST and even the Suzuki Swift Sport, they all have this, this magic that they bring to the drive and this grin factor. So this is the Hyundai or Hyundai i20N, their little hot hatch. Underneath the bonnet, we've got a 1.6 litre four pot turbo producing just over 200 horsepower, 204 horsepower and 275 Newton meters coupled to a six speed manual gearbox. And that is the recipe for an absolute riot when you go down a little B road, but there's better things as well, because as standard, this also comes with a limited slip differential because it is quite lively in your hands through the steering wheel. And the LSD in this car just gives it the ability to really pull itself out of the corners. It really is quite something. I think the front end of the car looks really cool. I love the, the trim around the bottom of the um, front end there, just above the splitter. I think the front lights look really, really cool. The alloys on this car, 18 inch alloys with a specific or bespoke tire made by Pirelli. And then the red brake calipers make it look like it means business. So front end of the car, on the money for me. Back end of the car is either going to be two boy racery for you or absolutely perfect. I can imagine that this roof mounted wing isn't going to be for everyone. For me personally, I think with the black roof, the black wing, privacy glass, and then contrasting that with the body color, I think it sets off the car really nicely, but that is coming from someone who really liked the roof wing on the Mini GP3. <laughs> this isn't quite as in your face and as full on as that. And I'm sure some of you would maybe prefer just a little lip spoiler, but actually for me, it sets the car off and it, and it just, just makes you realize that this car is a bit naughty and, and up for a giggle. Um, rear styling I like, I do like the lights. I like this kind of light bar across uh, the back. And then you've got this sort of diffuser, single real exhaust, Again, I quite like that. There's a, there's a bit of a trend, I think, on some hot hatches to put double exhaust on when they're not needed. This car's big brother, the i30N, has a double exhaust. And I remember that being quite roughy and shouty and lots of crackles and pops on overrun. This isn't quite as bad as that. I guess it's a lot to do with the new emissions and so on, but it's quite nice. It's got a really lovely startup noise. It kind of belies its, its kind of format, it's a tiny little car. It sounds brilliant when you start it up. And then when you're driving, and I'll do my best to try and capture this when we're driving, it's got a really nice tone on throttle. Um, there's, there's not massive amounts of pops and bangs and things on overrun, but every now and again, you'll get a whip crack. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason to when it happens. And I love that because, you know, sometimes when a car does it all the time, it loses its specialness, if you like. When this car does a, you think, oh, what was that? That 
how do I do that again? And it's, it only does it every now and again. It rewards you when you're really pushing on. In terms of your boot space, 352 liters of boot space. So it's not massive. It does actually have a false floor. So you've got a bit more space underneath. This is a small hot hatch, right? It's, I didn't expect it to have a huge gigantic boot, but there's certainly enough space in there to go away for the weekend. Now then, I haven't actually tried to get in the back yet, but let's just kind of unlock the car and see what the space is like in here. It's not looking good. <laughs> actually, to be fair to it, it's probably easier getting in this than it was getting in the back of my old mini Clubman. It's not actually too horrendous in here. Normal thing, big long legs, 34 inch inside leg, six foot three, I've got plenty of headroom and actually with a seat back for me to drive it's not an unreasonable amount of room in the back here you've got a little USB power socket here it's quite basic in the interior I'll talk more about that when I jump in the front but the seats seem pretty comfortable but all the action happens in that seat now then let's try and extricate myself well that was that was smooth Now, let me start off by saying this is not the most plush and well-appointed cabin you'll ever sit in. It has some, some scratchy plastics and some debatable choice of materials. However, everything you touch, the steering wheel, the pedals, the gear stick, everything you touch has a really nice feel. And we need to kind of bear something in mind. At the price point of this car, we're talking about a pretty high performance car, a couple of hundred horsepower from the engine. You've got completely uprated suspension compared with a normal i20. So uprated springs and dampers, uh, anti-roll bars. As standard, you get the limited slip diff, which if you look at something like a Fiesta ST, you have to pay extra for that with a performance pack. Um, you've got um, really nice alloys. You've got, you know, bespoke tires. And then on the inside, I've got, I've got all the toys I'd want. I've got a number of different drive modes we'll talk about when we get out on the road. They're these blue buttons. I'm not so fond of the color uh, blue on the steering wheel. Um, it's got a Bose stereo. The seats look great. They're very comfortable. Um, and all in all, it's just a really great place to be. So I can forgive it for, I'm not a big fan of this particular plastic here but it's 25 grand, okay? 25,000 pound on the road. And I think if you combine all of those things together, this is a great interior. Now, I'll start the car, see if we can get the... So it does have a, a, a bit of a nice bing bong. I'm not sure what it's binging and bonging at me for. Um, so everything's driven through the main touchscreen display just there. You've got a choice of different displays in front of you, depending on your drive modes. You basically got three drive modes. You've got Eco, Normal and Sport, which you control with this left hand button here. And then the right hand button puts you into N mode. The screen catches fire and that puts everything to the max. Uh, and you've really then got a very, very um, angry and shouty and fun car to drive. There are a couple of really nice features I like in this car. The pedals are brilliantly spaced for heel and towing, but it's got a rev match feature. So again, I'm sure many of you know what that is, but what that means is when I'm changing down through the gearbox as I select the lower gear, the engine just gets a little bit of a blip. It raises the revs up to accept the incoming gear and it makes those downshifts smoother. So you unsettle the car less. It means you can generally shift down a little bit earlier. And when you're pushing on, it's a brilliant feature. And to be quite frank, it does it a lot better than I can do heel and towing. So basically I've just used that all the time. I love it. It's a brilliant, brilliant feature. If you're not a fan of touchscreen, guess what? It's like every other car out there pretty much. It's all done through the screen. I can link a phone up with Apple CarPlay. It, in this particular model, it's with a cable, which isn't a massive inconvenience. Um, pretty good driving position. And you've got plenty of um, sort of reach and tilt adjustment in the steering wheel, which is really nice. And yeah, it's a good place to be. It's a good place to be though, to drive spiritedly. The gearbox in this thing is just fantastic, but honestly, we need to get out and go down some of my favorite roads and I'll talk you through what this car's like 
to chuck down a B road because <laughs> it's just sensational. Now this car does suffer from one of the things I didn't like about its big brother and that is the drive modes. There's just too many possible combinations and permutations. There are three different settings for engine, steering, ESC, rev matching and exhaust sound. Or you've got the left hand button which you can basically go into normal, eco um, or sport. So in the sport setting it kind of tightens everything up a little bit and you've got quite a nice nippy car in front of you and one of the things when I drove the i30N was I'd basically go into um, the, the various settings and, and just soften the suspension up a little bit because when you go into the N mode in an i30N the suspension is way way too hard. Happy to report though in this particular car I don't think it is that bad. Um, and now interestingly, I've got a Maserati just about to overtake me in a very interesting place. Off you go, mate. I'm just warming the car up. Otherwise, I'd have you. <laughs> Absolutely, I'd have him. This car down a B road would destroy that Maserati. And I know that sounds like a big statement, especially when this car's only got a couple of hundred horsepower, but less is more sometimes. I think there's a race especially in the hot hatch market, to get more and more and more horsepower. You know, when I first started driving, something like a, I don't know, a Renault 5 GT Turbo, which was the ultimate car you could get, had 120 horsepower, you know. I know it weighed about as much as one of my trainers, and modern day cars with airbags and crash protection and all that kind of thing are pretty heavy. But a couple of hundred horsepower in a car this size is gonna give you a massive grin on your face. You don't need 300, 350, or you look at something like the hyper hatches, your RS3s and uh, AMG A45s and so on at 400 odd horsepower. Don't get me wrong, they're amazing to drive, but you can't really exploit the car down a road like this because you'd be going so quickly, you're going to lose your license or kill somebody. This car, the thing I love most about this car, is it doesn't have that much power. It, that's one of the reasons I love Mini so much. And what that means is when you get the right bit of B road and there's no traffic, you can go down it and you can rev out the gears and you can really push the car. And you can feel like you're doing a million miles an hour, but you're not really. You know, you'll be there or thereabouts around the speed limit. And that for me, that's what I love most about this car because it's not actually that powerful and it's probably not actually that fast, but it feels fast. And it feels powerful. So I'm in N mode. You can do cool things in N mode like change when the shift up lights happen. I've got it set for 6,000 RPM. I've got rev matching on. You can just hear the burbles just on over on nothing too shouty nothing too naughty just enough to know that you're in a car with a little bit of go and a little bit of poke but when you get it down a road like this this is when you feel the diff at the front of the car it just has this immense pull out of the corners i've not driven it in wet conditions because it's the middle of summer and we've had pretty good weather since i've had the car but you know i'm doing national speed limit down here and you just you get to experience the gearbox because you change gear more you you can hold on to the gears it's just got this lovely feeling of poise the suspension is firm there's no doubt on that but it's not bouncy or crashy it's just purposeful and when you get on it when you pull out of a corner oh man this car it just it just delivers everything I want in a car it, it's got it's got a nice weighted steering. You can get on the power so early. The rev matching feature is really, really good. But for me, it's the poise of the car through the slightly higher speed corners. It's just absolutely brilliantly balanced.
brakes are good as well. So we're now in second. Let's pull up here. This is always a good test. <laughs> I've got grip to spare. Seriously grip to spare. And there we go on that 60 in third. So I'm still within the speed limit and I'm having an absolutely historic time. <laughs> why, why do you want more? 25,000 pounds is gonna get you more smiles per mile than, than most performance cars I can think of. This thing is brilliant. And as I've said a number of times, it's brilliant because it's not that fast. Right then, let's give this launch control a go. So launch control is active. Foot flat to the rev lift. sounds pretty good. And go. Go, 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 go. Point two five seconds. <laughs> One of the most dramatic 0 to 60 tests I've ever done. I think it, it's front wheel drive. It's manual. So the, I set the launch control up to hold the revs at 4,000 RPM. So it's kind of sat there on the limit, and then you dump the clutch, and it just hooks up the front wheels. No traction control at all, and they just scrabble for grip, even though it's a perfectly dry, warm, sunny day bit of wheel spin, little bit of front suspension skip. But then once it hooks up, it's fine. And I think I could have probably hung on into second gear and stayed in second gear to hit 60. I actually went for third and that might well have knocked a couple of tenths off, but not bad, not bad at all. And that sure was a lot of fun. And the performance element of this car is I'm sure one of the main reasons people will buy it. But we are living in times where fuel is nearly two pounds a litre. So I'm figuring actually, if you were buying this car, it would more than likely be your daily. And therefore you probably want to know what it's like on a long journey. And as luck would have it, the day after tomorrow, I've got to drive to Crewe to the Bentley factory for a Bentley factory tour, which is going to be cool with SEC private members. But I thought I would finish this video off with a little long, distance economy run just to see what the fuel economy is like on a longer journey and also what it's like if you're to sit in this car for I don't know three and a half to four hours so join me day after tomorrow Big day ahead of us today, really big day ahead. We are off to uh, Bentley. I'm gonna start the car and get it going. Bing bong, bing bong. Um, so, um, stop it. I've put the destination into Waze, Bentley Motor Company. I'm gonna plug Waze in. I have to do it by a wire, which actually is quite good because that means the foam won't overheat as we're on the way. But that also means that we have, there we go, 219 miles. Uh, that should take us three hours, 44 minutes and get there at just after 11 o'clock. I'm zeroing the trip, so we'll see what the MPG. Now, my plan for this journey is, um, I'm basically going to the first bit of twisty road. I might kind of drive just normally in sport and then I'm gonna, as soon as I get onto the motorway, I'll put it in eco and we'll just see. I'm not gonna try and drive economically. I'm just gonna drive normally and we'll see in 219 miles just what the MPG is like for this car. Now, we're on our way, but I was just scrolling through the various menus and I've spotted the since refueling stats. So I refueled 45 miles ago, but that is the time frame that I filmed the review in. So that included quite a lot of um, <clears throat> spirited driving. And my average MPG for that is 26.8, <laughs> which isn't great really is it but then I was on it I was kind of pretty lead lined right foot ha. 
<laughs> now that, that's twisty road sign recognition. I knew that twisty road sign was there. And what happens, the car spots it and then it pops up a little thing on your dash. Now, I saw it yesterday, but I was in end mode. So it kind of doesn't do anything. If you're in sport mode, and I'm guessing it must do it in normal and eco as well. When it sees a twisty road sign, it comes up and says, twisty roads ahead, push okay to go into end mode. It eggs you on. It wants you to attack the twisty roads. And I think that's brilliant. A completely useless feature in a car. But it's a bit like the openometer I have in my Roadster. I just think it's brilliant. Absolute genius. Now we're about halfway. We're on the M40 somewhere. Um, a quick report in about what this car's like on the dual carriageway stroke motorway. I don't want to do too much, otherwise this video is going to be really long. Um, I've got the cruise set to 70. It's not adaptive cruise, so I'm just going to put the brake on because I'm approaching this truck and there's a car in lane two. Um, the road noise is pretty good in here. If you're in end mode, there's a little bit of drone on the exhaust when you're on the motorway. Now, it's probably not enough to annoy me too much. But it's worth noting, I know some of you are quite sensitive to that kind of thing. But it's really comfy, really nice place to be in here. The, the suspension isn't too firm and too uncomfortable. So it is, you know, relatively luxurious. And it's doing all right. Yeah, right. Now we have less than 10 miles to go until we get to Bentley. We've just pulled off of the M6. Um, and annoyingly, <laughs> I stopped for a coffee and the cars reset the trip so that the drive information is now since my last refueling stop, which is 116 miles. But I have averaged 48.6 miles per gallon. Now, admittedly, that is 48.6 miles per gallon at pretty much either 60 or 70 miles an hour at cruise control on the motorway in Eco because uh, the traffic's been pretty good and I've had a little bit of uh, measured uh, speed camera roadworks. But I think that is astonishing. So not a million miles off of 50 miles to the gallon if you drive carefully. And then if I actually look at the accumulated info, so this is beyond what I've had the car, the last 400 or 650 miles pretty much. The car's averaged just under 40 miles to the gallon, 39.4 miles to the gallon. And that will be a combination of me driving a economically but also this is a press car so it will have been hammered quite a bit as well so I think there's three numbers there there's if you're really pushing on in a short duration you're gonna get mid 20s if you try really really hard and you're at a constant speed on a motorway in eco you're gonna get high 40s and on average I think sort of mid to late 30s is very very doable and so I think that's been a really really interesting test I'm gonna go back into end mode now because why wouldn't you because it's great so my my final conclusions on the car as I chuck it around a roundabout which is basically what this car absolutely loves doing is it's I love it. I honestly love this car. There's very little I don't like about it. The interior could be a bit better. Uh, um, that's about it really. I think it looks cool. I'm not so sure I go for this colour, but actually it is quite standout. I love the styling at the back. I love the roof wing. But it's the way this car drives. It is epic. I mean, seriously epic. If I compared it to a Fiesta ST, I'd have this car every day of the week. It's just got so much more character than the Fiesta ST, and a Fiesta ST is a good car. But I'm very close to Bentley. I'm gonna see a very different class of car today. But I have to say a massive thank you to Hyundai UK for lending me the car for a week. I've absolutely loved this car, and I will love the journey on the way home. But if you've enjoyed this film, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And from the seat of the Hyundai i20N, what a pocket rocket. It is a huge thumbs up from me. I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.